Um, hi, I'm glad to be here. Um, uh, this presentation will present our work, 3 fed Adaptive and Extensible Framework for Covert Backdoor Attack in Federated Learning. I'm Hao Yangli from the Hong Kong Polytechnic University. This work is done together with my advisor, uh, Qin Qingye and Hai Bo Hu, as well as collaborators from RUC, GU, and Huawei International Singapore. Okay, so federated learning is a distributed machine learning paradigm where a, a company or institution trains a neural network model on client's data set without access to it. So it goes like this. Um, clients receive the model from the server, um, train the model on their local data set, and return the model back to the server for aggregation. So federated learning is a privacy-preserving system but it's vulnerable to security issue. And backdoor, backdoor attack is one of the most notorious threat models in this field. In this situation, there's an attacker who adds a trigger, for example, a small pixel pattern to the data set and label all of them as an incorrect label, for example, the frog. And this is called a backdoor because uh, the model seems to perform well on most inputs but has a hidden trigger causing it to misbehave in specific situations. As a result, uh, the backdoor model easily bypasses normal security measures and gains unauthorized access to the global model's function. Now let's, let's take a closer look at, at this type of attack. Um, to be honest, um, existing backdoor attack algorithms have multiple limitations. Uh, which means if my defense is based on any of these aspects, I can detect the backdoor attack or mitigate the backdoor attack in a very effective way and I can have a beautiful number in my experimental results. But that's not the truth in practice. In fact, um, these limitations can be easily mitigated by the advanced attacker and this motivates us um, to propose a framework which can conquer all these limitations together. And the framework we propose is called 3 d -FAT. Um, so starting with a standard backdoor attack algorithm, which adopts a modified loss function during the training, we re revisit this, this approach and extend the baseline with two orthogonal evasion modules, noise mask and decoy models, as well as two reconnaissance modules, indicator and adaptive tuning. So uh, taking a clean global model, this attack uh, will will perform a sequence of operations when the server perform a sequence of defenses and make all server-side information invisible. So this attack will use indicator and adaptive tuning to obtain such information such that the attack can work in a complete black box situation and can tune the parameter automatically for the rest modules. As a result, um, Multiple limitations mentioned before are mitigated in this attack. And I will introduce three of them which can best express the power of our attack. For the rest, they follow a similar manner. So one observation in our paper is that um, existing backdoor attack algorithms are restricted to the training, like adding an additional term to the loss or projecting the gradients to some constraints. However, um, our concern is that Modifying the training cannot camouflage everything. Um, one problem remained by the training is the over-concentrated neural updates in backdoor model. It means in output layer, uh, the number of neurons being updated is in the backdoor model is much less than that in a benign model. Uh, the reason behind this phenomenon is the uh, bias of the attacker's training set. However, um, such unbalanced data set is crucial to obtain a backdoor model. So instead of um, finding a trade-off to harm the training, uh, one of our module, Noise Mask, is handling this problem in a more effective fashion. So here, suppose the attacker has two devices, um, each of them holding a copy of the backdoor updates. The attacker will, select, will ran uh, randomly select um, part of the low updated neurons and to perturb. The perturbation of one model is the inverse of the other. And this technique has two strengths. First it can hide some characteristics specific to the backdoor model. And these characteristics are difficult to solve during the training. And second, the sum of these noise vectors is zero, 
which means if all these spectral models are accepted to the global model and averaged, the noise will cancel out and the attacker can restore the original poisoning effect. However, a um, noise mask has a limitation which requires the magnitude of perturbation in order to bypass the unknown server-side defense. And we noticed that this is a common problem in existing model poison attacks that they unexpectedly use information which is invisible actually, but they just use it in their algorithm. For example, if the server applies norm clipping, they often assume that the attacker knows the actual clipping bound used by the server. And other types of model poisoning attacks have so-called black box version, but they just suffer from a noticeable performance drop compared to its white box one. So in the real black box scenario, uh, the only information one can assume is the global model broadcasting in every epoch. It means that if the attacker obtains a global model at epoch t and receives an updated uh, global model at epoch t plus one, uh, he has no idea whether uh, his backdoor model submitted at epoch t was accepted or not. So in order to break this black box, let's try to first answer this question. And the uh, technique we propose is called the indicator which is based on our observation that uh, some neurons will not change by too much when the model is close to convergence. And we call them redundant neurons. So if only the backdoor model will modify this redundant neuron, they can be assigned to indicate whether the corresponding backdoor model was accepted or not. So how it works, um, the attacker will select one redundant neuron in his backdoor model and perturb it with a slight and uh, a unique value and we can check the change of that neuron in the global model to notify whether the backdoor model was accepted or not. And if the change is so ignorable that it is below some kind of threshold, then we consider the model was rejected. Otherwise, we consider it as accepted. Uh, for how we select such redundant neuron and the threshold of making decision, we suggest you to refer to our paper. Okay, so finally, there's one more step to go. Uh, which is how to utilize the feedback information from the indicator in order to know the parameters we want to guess. And let's represent the noise magnitude we want to infer as a single floating point value. And here we use adaptive tuning, which will try the attack with different parameters by using multiple groups of devices. So formulated as an iterative approach, we can finally locate a suitable range of parameters by only knowing which group was accepted or not. And furthermore, um, the tuning can be adaptive because it can not only locate a fixed parameter, but will also notify the attacker to take any countermeasure when the server is also adaptive, or when the server changes its defense to use a different threshold. And in the experiment, we constructed a standard federated learning and implemented five backdoor defenses. And these backdoor defenses are state of the art and each of them applies unique uh, defense, uh, detection mechanisms. And sorry for the font size in the source. I actually cite the whole um, reference. So first defense is a deep side. It used the technique of a, 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 a update a uh, number of neural updates uh, discussed before, as well as other techniques in, based on the deep model inspection and is published in NDSS uh, last year. And fourth code is based on historical pairwise cosine similarities and is published on RAID uh, 2020. And FLAME is a weak differential privacy based approach which use uh, HDB scan, norm clipping and adding noise uh, to mitigate the effect of backdoor attack and it's a USNIC paper in last year. An FL detector is a, a KDD paper last year and it predicts a global model and use the model to filter out outliers based on model update consistency. And RFL BAT is based on dimensional, dimensionality reduction which projects the gradients to low dimensional space and perform clustering. And summarizing the result, uh, when there's no defense, um, the baseline uh, achieves a higher backdoor accuracy compared to ours. However, um, when there's any kind of defense applied, uh, 3D-FED just 
successfully maintains the uh, poison effect compared to no defense case and survive all the defenses considering this paper, uh, the baseline is either always being detected by the defense or it only causes short-term effects at the early stage of poisoning until its contribution is finally detected and removed. And there's a table I want to highlight. Recall that 3 effect is a multi-layered structure which combines multiple modules together. So here we want to see what happens if only one of them is applied against the same set of defenses. And we record the backdoor accuracy at the end, but the result is very poor. Where all this single layered attack only works for few defenses which they are designed to, but that's ineffective because the defender actually can choose any defense they prefer. And furthermore, it doesn't mean that the system is secure if we can put more and more defenses together because the attacker can actually break this dilemma by combining orthogonal efficient modules as a, con as a correspondence. Okay, so in summary, uh, we want to use this, this attack to correct false senses in existing fidelity learning backdoor attack. And it is imperative that we should uh, remain vigilant and proactive in our efforts to stay ahead of any potential threats. It is important to acknowledge that there might be some defenses in the future that can mitigate this uh, 3D FED. However, the multi-layered nature of this framework uh, indicates that there will always be potential avenue to enhance its capabilities by extending with new orthogonal modules. And we also have other modules which solve the backdoor uh, limitations in multiple noble perspectives. And again, for more details, please refer to our paper. And thanks for listening. Feel free to raise any questions. I had a question regarding the indicator. Sorry. Sorry about that. Um, so there, I guess, um, there is a bit of a trade-off in the sense the number of neurons that you select for tinkering well, to test whether your backdoor was accepted or not. If you tinker with, let's say, a large number of neurons, then doesn't that mean that the server might know that something weird is going on with the model? Okay, thanks for your question. That's a good one. Um, actually, we, we think about it, but later we find out that um, re recall that the indicator is selected based on redundant neurons, and one observation in, in our paper is that the number of redundant neurons is massive. So if you have some kind of defense which, based on detecting the uh, abnormal value in redundant neurons, there are just so many of them. Okay, so I guess in the CIFA-10 model, ResNet CIFA-10 model, there be nine millions of redundant parameters, which is very difficult to implement, actually. Thank you. Let's thank the speaker again.